It's still plus politics, and we're being joined by Reverend Joseph Hayab. Reverend, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. So, yes, looking at the um, all of the points that the um, bishop has, um, you know, marshaled, he's talked about the young, um, you know, asserting their position that they're here, taking over. He's talked about the fact that Nigerians are being suffocated um, by the current system and, of course, the current events in the country. I mean, you and I have sat here to talk about insecurity. We've talked about um, lack of good governance. Um, has anything really changed in, in recent months? Because yesterday I was talking to someone and the person was hoping that Mr. President will use the last um, few months that he has in office to effect some positive change. How do we get the president's attention on these matters that the bishop has um, spoken about? Uh, let me begin by actually commending uh, Bishop Matthew Hassan Oka for his uh, steadfast commitment and dedication in speaking out to power and saying things that matters to the ordinary Nigerian. The truth about it is that virtually in every quarter of Nigeria, people are truly suffocated. People are in pain, people are passing through difficulties. Things have really never changed. Uh, the challenge we have today is that, as I've always said, our leaders feel that they can govern us by rhetoric when in the actual fact people are dying. You remember just last week, people came out, or people early this week, showing concern about the signing of the electoral bill. And the kind of response we get from presidents, we do not even show that they care about the feelings of the people. Hmm. But it, he did talk about the need for the youth to know that it is their time, not that they shall grow. We've heard about the young shall grow many years ago in Nigeria. Some of these leaders today were leaders even when they were in their prime age. But even in this old age, they still want to remain the same leaders. So uh, what about the children they get back to? What about their grandchildren? What about the other young children? When will we give them opportunity? I'm not actually advocating that leadership should be given completely to young ones. Yeah, because I, I was about to ask, I was about to ask to if the young people to are ready. To their skills and begin to show their capability. Mm. Because I was going to ask that are, how ready are young people? And I'm not in any way trying to say that the young people, that they're not young people who are ready for leadership. But then if we, if we say today, let's, you know, take power and give it to all the young people, how ready are these young people to take the reins of power? When you look at our streets, go to many places, you will see young Nigerians who are doing excellent. Why should someone judge them because there is one young man who has made an error? The error of one young man should not determine the complete 99% of other young people. So there are many young people in Nigeria who have skills, who have leadership ability, who are actually showing that leadership in the small area of their influence. Why don't we give them opportunity to go higher? You see, we are completely even dampening the morale of the young people, making it look as if if you're a young man, you cannot be anything, you cannot lead, you cannot contribute to the discussion, you cannot contribute to every decision making. So we're not encouraging them to move on. The young people need to see deliberately that government is willing to give them space, government is giving them more and more opportunities so that they will come and show what is deposited in them. So I see them, many of them ready. The only thing is that they've never gotten the opportunity. Some of them are already frustrated with effort to get a job that they have applied in more than 30, 50 places and there is nothing. So sometimes because of the frustration, you hear them saying things that if you don't understand where they are coming from, you may judge them wrongly. Mm. Some of them have actually gone to school, they know the pressure they went through, getting money to pay school fees and after school, there is nothing to offer. So sometimes when you see them reacting, they are only reacting to the situation. Give them the opportunity and you will see them excel because they are already doing it in many fields. Okay. The few ones that are doing it, have we even called them to say, okay, since we are excelling here, come and prove it in the nation uh, uh, stage. We have not done that. So I don't go with people who think that young men are not right. They are right. Many of them are ready. They just need opportunity. But I'm also believing that we cannot say completely everything is given to the young ones, but there will be a mix of young and old mm -hmm. so that they will be learning through the process, growing through the process and becoming better. When you go out of the show of this country, you will see how young people are learning to take responsibility and become patriotic, independent and protecting their country. Not necessarily with God. Why are we allowing our children to only go into your way of home? Mm. Uh, talking about that, 
Um, we're always very quick to put all our problems at the fit of the presidency or the president or the leader uh, of the country. But then we fail to also push responsibilities on our local government chairman, on our members of the State House of Assemblies, even the governors. We're always calling on the president, whether it be an Obasanjo or a Yaradua or a Good Luck Jonathan, we're always calling on the president. We seem to forget that the governors are the ones who are saddled with the responsibility of making sure that lives are protected within the states, businesses uh, thrive, the environment is made conducive for these businesses to thrive. And of course, it, I, I don't really think it's the job of governors to, or any government to give jobs to people, but of course, create the environment for these jobs to thrive. So where, why are we not putting the same pressure we put on the president, on our state governors? Because I see that all the time. Again, uh, yeah. well, let, me, let, let, let me respond to your question by saying that I represent higher and can of Kaduna State, the, the organization I am representing. I don't think we share this idea of putting the blame on the presidency alone. We have told our governor several times where he is wrong and how he needs to adjust. We also tell the whole government where they are wrong and how they need to adjust. Just as we do tell the next president and his cabinet where they are wrong and where they need to adjust. But I want to also be honest to myself that many of the local government chairmen have little to offer because they've been caged by their governors. The fact of all is that the little money, the grant that comes to them every month, it's not going to them directly. It goes to one commissioner appointed by the governor. The commissioner just decides how much they are going to. They will just come to the State House of Assembly for firemen or some procedures just for paper. But the real money is not with them. So sometimes when you demand too much from them, you realize that their hands are tied. So I do know this a lot about many local governments. And I know it's not only in Katuna State, in many local governments, in many local governments in Nigeria. But you see, the governors have a responsibility and they are not leaving it and they are not blaming the president. But we have, as Nigerians, we must ask these questions. Questions to the governor, questions to the president, and questions to the, 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 the local government chairman because we do all elected all of them. So there is no one that is being uh, speared, but it all depends on the issue we're talking. When you talk about security, you have to look at the presidency because he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. When you look at the issue of construction of roads at state level, then you will talk about the governor and other things that he's supposed to do. When you look at certain employment and certain things, services in the state, hospitals and schools, you talk to the governor. When you come to the local government, you look at the local government system and talk about primary school and uh, primary health care. But you will also agree with me that even on that, there are many local governments who have no control over even super. Those super supposed to belong to them. Mm. So there are so many funny things going on in Nigeria. And that's why I started by commending Kuka for always coming out to speak to power and speaking on the need for things to change so that Nigerians will be proud of this country. This country must not remain this way. We've okay. suffered too long. Mm. We cry that it was military regime. Now we are in a democracy, but it seems we are even worse than a military democracy. Finally, before we go, um, Bishop Cooker m made a point which is very, very important. He said, whether we call it restructuring, rotation, zoning, or whatever English name we want to give it, we know that something must happen. We need to disrupt this system because it is not working for the other 90% of many Nigerians. We need to bend the arc of justice uh, for it. Uh, to serve the people of Nigeria because we cannot continue like this without suffocating under the burden. Very interesting point. And uh, this is campaign season. We're hearing zoning. The zoning issue is being discussed every other day. The political parties are saying to zone or not to zone. We've, we've heard restructuring for the past two years. You know, it comes up before the campaign season, during campaigns and during elections. But then in reality, what do we need for our leaders and us, the people, to do to make sure that the tide is turned for us? Because at the end of the day, we seem to be the grass that's suffering while the elephants are fighting, in closing. I think we've been using so many terminologies in this country, and we just say the term, but we don't act in accordance with the term. That's why Bishop Buka is saying that instead, we must just do something. And what we need to do is, number one, our leaders must begin to treat and act sincerely, speak and act sincerely. If we say we need restructuring, this government, current government, actually even campaigned and talked about restructuring. Sadly, when she came, there was nothing like restructuring. She even set up a committee about restructuring. The committee started talking, but they were just buying time and wasting people's, uh, drawing, diverting people's attention. But the reality is that they never intended. We talked about uh, state police, but you know that the 
begins to turn and another day the president will tell you that there's no even way that we can have state police so everything government is saying there is no sincerity there's no commitment to doing it but the reality is that nigeria is not moving forward so what can we do whether we call it whatever then can we do something to move this country forward can we do something to give the common man, the villager, the man who is not even in government, to feel a sense of belonging to this country. Can we be fair and honest enough that leadership is not the birthright of just some selected people? You don't need to show the identity of your tribe or religion before you get certain privilege in Nigeria. You should get it by virtue of your qualification or you are better prepared than others. But we keep toying with people's minds and nothing is going. We favor our people, nothing is moving. We suppress others, nothing is moving. Can we be honest and treat Nigeria as a country that we love and we want to see things work for us? Well, Reverend Joseph Hayab, always a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. All thank right. You. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. And that's it on Plus Politics. But before we go, oh, well, I'm going to be leaving you with uh, what Nigerians have to say about the fourth year of Leah Sharibu's um, captivity. And, of course, uh, a lot of people had something to say about it. We're hoping that someday she will gain her, regain her freedom. I am Mary Anna Kong, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening. That was how they were silent uh, during the Chibok and the uh, Dapchi girls until we start seeing um, rescues and um, negotiations with um, the captors and the eventual release of the girls. But on Lea Shaibu, um, where the silence has been, um, has been loud enough and um, I believe it's time for them to do something about her. Um, she's a young girl with a very bright and prospect. Um, I believe the silence is not good enough. What I have to say generally about the issue of kidnap, especially the kidnap of minors, is uh, the government should take it very seriously because it's a disgrace to our nation and the government of the day where uh, minors are kidnapped and uh, nothing is done about it and we we'll go about our daily activities as if there is, is no problem. It's a big shame and I expect that the government should take this more seriously and go after the kidnappers and release these minors because we owe them a duty of uh, protecting their lives. I say perhaps the reason is because she's not from uh, any influential family because uh, in our present society there's a lot of uh, segregation you know, there's a lot of uh, this uh, unevenness, you know, disparity and um, discrimination, you know. There's a, this on this divide of the rich and the poor, you know, if you don't have influence, if you're not going to have connections, a lot of things, you know, that are basic will you know, somehow become luxury. So the reason why the governments, they are somehow, you know, complacent on our own issue is because uh, she's not connected to any of them. As I'm talking to you now, the president cannot do anything further to release such child.